Hi, my name is Neil Valparda, and I'm Product Manager for Magento at Nexus. Today, I'll be showing you one of our latest additions, Safe Harbor for Magento 1. Now, as many of you might know, Magento 1 is coming to an end of life in June 2020, and we created this add-on to any of our existing plans, basically to try to accommodate any of our existing customers so they have some more time to migrate someplace else instead of staying in Magento 1 forever. Now, Safe Harbor is an add-on to any existing Magento plan to accommodate stores who are not ready yet to migrate to another platform. I really need you to understand this shouldn't be taken as a way to earn extra technical dev or as a way to stay in Magento 1 forever. It is important to know that Magento 1 is really old, as in a really old platform, with many architectural problems, so everybody should be considering moving away from this to any other platform in the near future. Now, we base this offering around three different points. Security, monitoring, and patching. Now, in this slide, you can see we have three different things when it comes to security. The first thing we have is the web application firewall. Basically, that's an application to block all web traffic that does not meet the firewall configure rules. This is pretty simple. This is something we've already been doing for the last, I don't know, decade maybe. One of the other things we're doing to keep your store secure is a daily malware scan. We'll be scanning your site every day at night to see if there are any new files and if those files that are new have any malware in it. And we are also are going to be monitoring your site to consistently check for site availability from the edge. Now, these are only some of the features I'm going to be showing you today, so let's move. Now, today there are hundreds of thousands of Magento stores owners who don't know what the end of life situation means. When this all started, Magento 1 was basically used for really small stores, maybe selling between 10 and, I don't know, 1,000 SKUs at max. And these people, these store owners, they are not technical people. They are just regular people trying to sell online. So they don't really know what this new end of life situation means. And that's why we created this product. Basically, we also realized these stores haven't kept up with Magento and PHP upgrades. Most of these stores are running really old Magento versions and even PHP 5.6 for what it's worth, which is terrible. So we are pretty sure these people aren't ready to invest in an upgrade to Magento 2 or to any other software platform for what it's worth. What we need to understand is that most of these stores, they are not really, really big technical companies. They are just regular people, mom and pop stores, trying to sell online. And it's, we all know this platform, we've been trying to make this work forever, but we know how hard it can be to basically try to develop anything on Magento 2. So these people, they basically need time to find a partner to help them navigate their options. And that's where you come into play. We need, we need you to understand these people are afraid, these people are scared, and they are just, they are just trying to, to succeed when it comes to selling online. And that's why most of the situations we see around Magento 1 are not the most technological opportunities we see out there. But they are still valued customers, and that's why we are trying to accommodate them as much as we can. Now, that's why we introduced Nexus Safe Harbor. Basically, we've been doing this forever. We are the expert in the Magento hosting space, and we are trying to provide with a couple of, of features for these people to feel secure. All this offering is based around security. Most of, the, most of the merchants we've interviewed, they don't feel safe when it comes to end of life and Magento 1. They, as I told you, they don't really understand the risks, but they don't want to be hacked. And that's one of the, that's one of the things we are trying to avoid when it comes to Magento 1. Now, who, was, who is our safe harbor for? We are currently focused on merchants who don't have a relationship with an agency partner, have an upgrade even to the latest Magento 1 version, do not have internal technical staff to manage updates, and are not ready for the expense of a migration to Magento 2. Now, this is a subset of the customers we have. Safe harbor is not for everybody. And these are the four bullet points we think that matches best the profiles we are trying to sell these to. Now, what's included in our Safe Harbor? Our Safe Harbor add-on works with any of our plans and offers daily malware scans, and change threat protection, staging environments, and backported security patches post end of life. Now, the last two features, I'm going to be showing this in a minute, but the last two features are some of the features we are asking about a lot. Like people ask us, what are we going to do about patches? What are we going to do about testing in production? And we found some ways to try to make this work for them without creating extra security problems. Now, this is our portal. This is what a customer sees. Um, this store in particular, this customer in particular, already purchased Safe Harbor. 
So basically, when you when you have it, you're going to be seeing the bottom here that says it's at safe harbor. This is the way to remove it. So basically, we are going to be checking what we have. Now, as I told you, we're already doing daily malware scans. What does this screen show? This screen is going to show any file that's been modified and contains malware in the last 24 hours. Now, this total file scan zero means there are no changes since the last scan. So zero new, zero new files were scanned and zero new files were found with malware in it. Now, let's say we find something. This is going to be really easy because we are going to be seeing the files here. We can basically select the file here and start a super investigation. This is going to contact our super team and it's going to include all the issues and all the details we need to try to start to try to start working on this particular problem. Now, let's let's move to tree protection. Now we have three different services here: the web application firewall blocking requests. We already know the real-time IP blacklist. We know there are certain IPs and IP ranges that are basically <laughs> trying to scrap your site, trying to trying to destroy your site to send it away. And we find those and we block them. In the last 24 hours, we blocked some, of I, some IPs for this site in particular. These IPs were, are known to be harmful, are known to be basically robots trying to scrap your site, and that's why we blocked them. Now, m around 40, 45% of the traffic we see every day is caused by bots, and that's why we also added a bad bot rate limiting feature to this safe harbor add-on. Basically, we don't want these bots to, to consume your entire bandwidth, and that's why we're trying, we're trying to to block them as much as we can to avoid to avoid having huge invoices because bots are trolling your site. Now, staging environments. This is one of the features I like the most. Forever, we, we we've been trying to avoid people from trying in, from trying new stuff in production in lib sites, but we failed. And it's I don't I don't think it's it's our fault, but it's a thing we've been seeing consistently. And people people just try new stuff. In their in their lead sites in their production environments and that's a terrible thing to do mostly because you get to break everything and then when everything is broken you are not making any money and then you call me and i'll be like okay let me fix this site for you but i'm gonna realize you were testing in production and i'm gonna be super mad so that's why we created this feature basically we create an exact copy of your site anonymizing the data in the same environment using everything we are using in your live environment, but this is a staging environment. So by doing that, you can actually go in here, try new stuff, try new PHP version, install a new module, try to try to change any configuration in the backend. This is the this is the place where you where you should be doing all that stuff. Basically, because if you do that in production, it's gonna be a mess. And we don't want you to be losing money when we are fixing your site because that's problematic for everybody. And that's one of the reasons we created this staging environment feature. And now we go to Magento patches. Basically, this is what people ask me the most. Everybody is afraid about patches after June 2020. People ask me about PCI. What does not having any patches mean when it comes to PCI DSS certifications? And we created, we decided to to create this feature basically because we are we have been we have been maintaining and supporting Magento One for over a decade now, and this is not going to be any different. There's no need to trust me. There's no need to actually trust in the things I'm saying to take this as a promise. We've been doing this forever now. We are probably the only company that's been in the ecosystem for at least a decade. So it's not like you have to trust me and be like, yeah, this is gonna this is gonna end in June or they are gonna start supporting Magento One end of life versions after June. We are already doing that. And that's why we were able to create these kind of patches. Now, let's say you want to install a couple of patches. Basically, what you can do is, hey, I want to install this patch and this patch. You can view the details, you can download the patch yourself, or you can request an installation. And that's, that's how you do it. Basically, you select the patches, you click on request installation, and we are gonna, this is going to be submitting a ticket with all the details you need, well, with all the details we need to process this and to install these patches into your store. Now, we've seen quite a few stores with modified core files. And that's a terrible practice we've all seen in Magento 1, and it's not going to go away anytime soon. Uh, so sometimes there are, there are some patches that we are unable to apply, mostly because we are trying to patch a file that's been previously modified, as in a core file. So 
when that happens, we have this template to tell our customer, hey, this file was manually modified. Any chance you can bring that file back to its original state so we can actually go and patch this for you? So we've seen that. That's a thing we've seen in, the, in this ecosystem for a while. So we have that covered too. Now, this is pretty much it. This is all I have to show you for today. But if you have any questions or if you have any issues with this, there are several resources online you can check. And you can always, you can always contact me directly. You know where to find me. If, it, if it's not via email, it's on Twitter. And if you ever have any questions, please feel free to contact me.